All right, everybody, hey, it's Brent Central, Arkansas. We are in the greenhouse, and we have finished up the Fawn 2 platforms. This is part two of top-up methodology, and it's in this video that I explain how Fawn is going to operate, Fawn 2, and uh, all that. So, let's get started. Fawn 2 is a closed system. That means that it goes from one complete area over all seven of these Fawn 2 platforms and stops here and goes back over it again and it continues in a loop, a circular type fashion is closed. Everything in the system flows through this pipe. That's one and a half inch PVC. It goes to every Fawn platform and uh, it's got everything in. It's got the distribution line, it's got the airline and, and the return line all in one line. And it all comes back here to this first fawn. And this is the distribution slash reservoir slash grow fawn two. Inside this fawn is a pump and I'll show you that here. Okay, I've taken the covers off these two so I can demonstrate what's going on here. First thing we need to understand is how the pieces work together, uh, pieces and parts work together. Um, what we've got here is a drain that can be moved down or up with four lines coming out of it. One of the lines, as you can see, is an air pump and it's on right now. And all that does is it keeps the nutrient well mixed and gives the plants aerated nutrient water. Okay, the pump is running and all of them are getting this much coming out of every single one of these little lines. And that will quickly fill this up and they will fall out of here. See the water falling out of them holes? All the way down. Okay, as the water level rises it goes into here back out into the T here and drains back down into here while we're waiting on that to start coming through here I've been fiddling with it but while we're waiting for that to start coming out here what I should tell you is that the pump strength to the overall system is gauged by this valve right here if I close it off pump is sending full force to all the fawns. If I open it up, it's getting a lot less. And you can see that this water coming out here goes all the way down and it stirs this up. It keeps it agitated along with the air stones. This fawn has, the distribution tank has three stones in it. And the purpose of keeping it completely stirred up like this and aerated is to mix the concentrated nutrient. That pump pumps out on a timer several times a day. I think it's like seven, nine, one, three, five, and seven. And it pumps out for a few minutes and then it stops and it lets all the fawns drain back in. While it's pumping, air stones in every fawn pumps air to the whole, to each and every fawn. And the air distribution is provided by that pump right there to every single fawn. It also provides aeration to each concentration tank and the other distribution tank for the flow to waste. After the system shuts off, the pump shuts off, within five minutes a timer is set to go off to put concentrate through this tube down into here. right after the pump starts lowering gravity fed water from the storage barrels up here flows out from that line down into here now all that is or seems complicated to a lot of you I know I've heard your comments and it's the setup yes it can seem a little complicated but once it's set up it runs on its own I mean, I never have to fiddle with it anymore. All I do 
is I'll go down here and I'll lift up one of these plants and I'll put a PPM member, uh, meter in it here, 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 all the way down. And I'll check the PPMs to see that they're consistent. Remember, this is a recirculating closed system, so everyone should be within a few PPMs of each other. Now these are the 250 gallons of water that's pumped in from the house. And you can probably see through the shade cloth there's a washer. When that washer gets closer to the top, I'll turn on the house water to these and just fill them back up. And that takes about 15 minutes to fill it from empty to full. So after checking the PPMs, which doesn't take very long at all, do it every day or two, all I have to do is monitor that washer and put in water when needed and everything else is taken care of automatically in the whole system. Now that's pretty much it guys. So why did I do this? I went from Fawn to Fawn 2. Um, I actually had a lot of these ideas a long time ago. I just didn't have the money to implement them. But one of the things I wanted to mediate was hot and cold temperatures. These platforms are now super insulated. They have uh, foam on top and then the wood is a great insulator itself. In each one of them is a body of water and it takes a long time to get to the insulated body of water and effectively heat or cool the whole thing. So what that does for the plants is it provides a, cons a consistent water or temperature monitored water system and from that you'll get some temperature coming up through the pot here as well. And that'll help mediate some of the foliage issues, but it'll always keep the roots at a good, comfortable temperature. Not only does that much water also keep the temperatures down, but also it creates a body, a, a large amount of volume that tempers the pH and PPMs. So in other words, uh, there's no quick adjustment of pH up or pH down or PPMs going too high or too low. So the plants get a more consistent feeding of nutrient. And it's also a lot easier on me to check and change the uh, pH and although I never mess with the pH, but more of the concentration of the nutrient. One aspect of this that I incorporated into it is aeration. This thing is loaded with aeration. Aeration prevents disease, it prevents stressing of plants, it prevents because the plants aren't stressing, it, it uh, lowers the amount of uh, insect infestation, uh, just all that. Without all that, aeration is critical. If I didn't have aeration in this, there's a potential for anaerobic behavior and I just want to make sure there was absolutely no issues with anaerobic, anaerobic behavior and that's when the water becomes stagnant and uh, bad organisms infect the water thereby affecting the plants. This system is not primarily a top-down watering system otherwise known as a hydroponic drip system. It's more related to a recirculating deep water culture more than that. Also, if you saw the gutters, it's got shallow water culture in it. And the water level within the fonts can be raised or lowered between shallow and, um, and deep water culture. Although um, I've seen where it says over 10 inches is deep water under 10 inches. But anyway, it's a water culture. And water culture is a really good method, especially if you have a stable medium that the plants can sink their teeth into the roots, I mean, and that's what I'm trying to provide here. None of this can happen without the greenhouse. This system, if it was outside, it would get rained on. Uh, it would just, the, the wood would start to rot. It would just become a mess to keep up with the PPMs, pH and all that. So the, the environment is controlled more than anything else by the greenhouse, the um, actual air environment. And there's no rain that hits in here. There's no um, sleet. I can close the sides and, and uh, moderate temperature. So it's definitely worth having a greenhouse if you're gonna grow in here. Now I have the sides up. It's nice and cool when the sides are up because it just whips right through here. And I've got the shade cloth up here 
because you can see the sun's right here. It kind of goes across here during the middle of summer, late spring and summer, and it's more over here during the winter. But um, yeah, the, the intensity here, I get so many hours of sunlight that I had to put some shade cloth up because I noticed that in the afternoons late, the plants were getting hot and wilty. And since I've done that, that's fixed that. So uh, all this works really well within a greenhouse controlled environment. Oh, so I think that's enough. That's enough for this video. This is uh, part two. The last part of top up methodology is simply means that I'm growing hydroponically and I'm adding stuff to reinvigorate, add more uh, nutrient and water and keep the plants going and sustainable. This is Brent, you guys. We'll see you later. Did you know you can subscribe to me? Check it out. Click right here on the subscribe button. See that? It's got a little check next to it. If you click on the little bell to the right of it, it'll bring up a little notification that says send me all notifications for the channel every time I make a video. Click save. You'll get an email notification that I have made a new video. This is for those who don't know. Thanks for watching. You guys take care. See the elbow right there? Let's see the airline going in. I've got a 10 foot piece of 3 quarter inch PVC. This is going to be the supply line. You can see the top hat grommets here. There's three of them. And those are going to go, this 3 quarter inch pipe feed line with the tubes, the quarter inch tubes that are going to go in here, are going to slide inside the inch and a half pipe. I put the three supply lines in and the air hose through and I you can see it's through in here it's coming up through the return lift and the air hose parts hooked up now I need to hook up the supply line to the grommets here and on here all right the lines come out of there this is the feed line comes out down through the elbow through the return line here and hooks up over there. Now I'm going to turn this pipe where these are going downward. You really have to kind of think about it. I mean it's not complicated but you have to think about what you do before you fit the pieces together and all that. We completed that end down there. Now we're coming down here. We got a solid pipe here. An air hose that came out of the left side from in here. All four of these again are going through the drain and water will go down the drain uh, but yeah you had to run through the pipe here that's gonna go here and that'll fit in uh, there we go and then uh, we got to scoot this down the T down and fit it over the quarter inch tubing that's already into the top pet grommets and then we got to orient this we can't push it on too hard but we got to orient it fits over this fitting here and then once we kind of get it snug uh, we got to take the T from the air hose line here and attach it so you just gotta what I'm saying is you just gotta kind of think about it or I had to <laughs> all right and it's complete now I've done two the first one with the elbow and the first T now I'll just do all the rest bring you back when they're done I'm finishing up the last fawn, or the seventh one, or the one closest to the storage barrels, however you want to look at it. And um, it's going to be a little different. As you can see, it's got a bigger, um, well, it's actually going to be an inlet <laughs> in this particular case. Things are not going to drain out of this. They're going to be pumped out of this, and they're going to drain back into this. So what I'm saying is, this fawn is going to be the distribution tank. And uh, all the other fawns are going to drain back into it. Uh, the top up is going to go into it. And it's going to mix and become a tank at this, at, uh, at this end of the greenhouse. So it's all going to be one closed system. And I'm hoping with doing it this way that I could run it continuously if I like. And just leave the pump on and uh, just let it run and run and run. I'm not going to do that. don't want to waste the electricity. But I'd like to be able to do that.
It's got three air stones in it, and the purpose of having three is basically to agitate and mix the water as it top ups. I've got the pump done. I've got the valve adjustment in done. I've got the final elbow for the drain is complete. The um, distribution line from the pump is set. The pump is underwater and ideally when this thing pumps eventually it'll fill to the point where uh, nearly as much is coming back as is pumping. Fawn 2's are filling and starting to drain back now. Here's the line that does it all. It's the drain, supply line, and all of it. And that's what it looks like going down.